What is going on guys, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are having a good day so far. And uh, if you guys didn't watch the last video, I got the Integra running better. I figured out my issue, found out it's more or less a throttle body design issue than it is maybe a bad sensor. Can't confirm that sensor part though, but got it taken care of. But uh, I also need a new idler control valve now because the one that I bought was faulty. So can't win them all. But basically what I got going on right now is this video is more or less just gonna be kind of showing you the things I gotta fix. Um, cause I'm going to start working on the entire, getting it sanded down and whatnot. Uh, two videos ago, I had picked up some parts for the car. I got some doors and whatnot. And, um, a few people were questioning like what the doors were for, like why I got another set of doors and whatnot and why they were green or whatever. So I just put them on as is to make my job easier. Cause I needed window regulators and I needed window guides. These doors that I got off of Buddy's parts car were in better condition. Um, and it's, if you've never messed with a DA before, doing window regulators on a DA is practically impossible, it seems. So it was just easier to swap whole doors. Um, but I'm gonna just kind of go over, more or less, all the spots that I missed last time the car got painted. And if any of you guys are gonna be kind of questioning why I'm painting it again, um, a lot of you guys that maybe watch Law Tommy Law's videos, um, he changes his setup on his car, the looks, the bumpers, the wheels, everything consistently. I'm just like him. I, I don't like looking or having the same look for too long. Um, so I don't want to change the engine bay color. Again, I want to keep the car more or less one solid color exteriorly. Uh, so it's going to be Captiva Blue Pearl. Right now it is OEM Frost White. This is the color the car was when I originally got it. And it's been like six different colors. And the blue was by far my favorite. It was not Captiva Blue. It was just some rust Metallic Blue, which still looked good, just really crappy prep work. So that is more or less what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start sanding. I'm gonna get the spoiler and stuff off. And then I'm gonna just uh, try not to really drive the car too much, especially since my idle air control valve is shot. But uh, I'm gonna just try to get the prep work done correctly this time. Maybe no, it wasn't necessarily wrong the last time. I just had uh, skipped over some things that I thought were okay, wouldn't be noticed, or I didn't see them at all. So without further ado, let me go switch lenses really quick so you can kind of get a better uh, angle at what I'm talking about on some of these things. For anybody wondering that happens to be a camera guy or maybe you guys are starting out on YouTube and trying to figure out what stuff to use, this is the lens that I normally use. This is my Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter. This is a wide angle lens with a little bit of zoom. And uh, I absolutely love this lens other than the fact that the autofocus mode is very loud. So you'll see in some of my shots, I may go out of focus because I leave the focus on manual most of the time, unless I'm just cameras off and I'm correcting my lens. So the lens I'm filming on right now, the one that's on the camera is my Canon 18 to 135 lens. So uh, yeah, now that that's over, this is a nice little zoom lens, good autofocus. So anyway, let's go back out to the car and let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So to start off, and I apologize if uh, the audio gets a little loud or a little uh, closer sounding, I have my mic facing backwards so I don't have to speak next to the camera. I'm just speaking directly into the microphone. So anyway. Um, to begin with, the fenders. I know a lot of you guys like my DIY fenders um, from my fender vents. I do want to replace the fenders uh, for a few reasons, one of which being these are just poor condition fenders. That's why I did the cutouts in the first place. I needed fenders to practice on. I knew I wanted to replace them. So I figured I'd uh, you know, do so. Because these ones, like right off the bat, it uh, does not clear or it does not line up with the headlight at all. For whatever reason, this part of the fender is pulled in, and then um, obviously I'm replacing them, but just to show you guys, I've got some, I've just got gouges here. This is from, these gouges are both actually from when I was doing a B20 VTEC conversion into this car, and I was uh, hauling the car. I had the fenders off, we were hauling it down to the shop, and the fenders were in the bed of the truck, and uh, bounced around, landed on top of each other, gouged the paint pretty good. So that's that. And then you can already tell, oh, I don't know how it looks on camera because it's very bright out. I can't see the screen and I know it's going on white so that may look bad as is. But there's two different shades of white here and there's actually a line of the paint because the paint is thicker right here than it is right here. This section here was just rattle can because obviously I did the fender cuts. I wasn't, I didn't have the material. Um, not to mention the Bondo is cracking here because I didn't do it correctly. Um, because I don't use Bondo much, so this is also gonna be a learning experience for me. Um, but yeah, so that's that. This fender does not line up correctly here, just looks bad, it's all sorts of beat up. And then this fender over here 
is bent in right here. So I don't know really how to fix that. I just want to replace it anyway. It curves in too much here, which then causes this end to pop out. Um, and then other than that, this fender's in good shape, minus the fender cutouts as well. Again, I want to get a new set of fenders, so that way I can make the cutouts larger, so that way they're actually effective in terms of ducting brake heat. Um, but again, just broken Bondo up here. This one was because it was like 45, 50 degrees outside, and I was trying to pull the fenders out by hand a little bit because they weren't clearing the tires all that well. And uh, yeah, cold Bondo, stretching it didn't work too well. That's why it cracked. But yeah, that's that for the fenders. Now let's move on to some runs in the paint that uh, I never got taken care of. So I don't know how well you can see this run right here, this pretty big old thick guy. Um, I never ended up wet sanding that out because I had never experienced that before. I had never dealt with wet sanding a uh, freshly painted car before. And then I just eventually forgot about it. And I usually do forget about it until I'm walking around the car and I, and I notice it. So I've also got lots of runs along the, the hatch here. Um, where, yeah, I mean, the only issue that we really ran into is last time the car got painted, I had uh, paid the body shop manager at my dealership I was working at the time to spray it. And I'm sure he rushed it because it was just a weekend gig for him. He was just trying to get in and out really quick. But mostly the booth was having heating issues, so the booth was not at the uh, optimal temperature and uh, just wasn't all around right. So we got runs there, we got runs on the other side, runs along here, and then, uh, just looking over the car now, like the roof also, I can see, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see it on camera. There's lots of little dings from like hail damage that I never honestly saw on the car until probably a year after I painted it. Um, let's see, what else? So along the inside of here, um, yeah, I don't really know how to go about fixing that. I may just take some sort of epoxy to fill that, to fill the seams. Um, not that it has any issues, it doesn't leak inside or anything, but that does not look good by any means. So, another thing that just bugs me about all of this is, I know you're not going to be able to see it on camera most likely because of how bright it is outside and on white paint, but there is lots of spots on the side from previous damage that I had done to the paint being naive and stupid and using like a wire wheel to strip the paint where there's rough spots that I uh, just forgot to, to clean up when I was painting the car last. So, yeah, I mean, there's just scratches everywhere. So I'm not going for a full on show car, but I just want to point out to you guys again, just the things that I want to fix, that I want to improve on, because that's the other reason I'm painting the car is, I mean, other than being bored with the white, I want to improve on my skills. So what better way to do it than to just keep on doing it. As for the front bumper, I do have that 92, 93 bumper I picked up from my coworker sitting on the back porch. Um, I may try and source out another one, which I think there is one at the junkyard right now. I may have to go scoop it up if it's still there. But uh, if not, I'll try and patch up the bumper I have in back good enough to where I can use that. As for the rear bumper, this actually happened because I have a stupid boulder at the end of my driveway down there and uh, I just happened to be backing in at night giving us I just a subscriber came to buy something and I gave him a ride in the car and my stupid self wasn't paying attention when I was backing up smacked right into the boulder chipped the paint up and made that all nasty looking as for this stuff right here this is completely unknown as to what happened because uh, I just walked out one day was gonna go to work or go drive the car and then I realized that the paint was all crinkled and I didn't put two and two together, but I just thought it was maybe the cold or something causing the paint to wrinkle until I realized it's been a year and a half and that doesn't happen. Um, Cause the paint still wrinkled a bit, spider webbed or whatever, it's obviously flaking, but then my um, garnish panel here, I pulled it out a bit, but you may be able to still see it that it's got a bit of a dent in it and that this does not line up evenly here. So, whereas this is uh, more lined up there, if you come along the, the rear here, it gets a bigger gap. So I don't really know exactly how to fix that because that is not the garnish panel that is damaged right there. Um, that's pushing it in. That is the actual rear of the car. So I don't know how to go about that. If any of you guys are any sort of experienced in this type of thing, let me know if I have to pull it, the easiest way to pull it uh, and the safest way to pull it, I suppose. But yeah, so that needs to be patched up and or replaced the garnish panel. And uh, actually I can probably just bond to that because the dent is really small now because I already tapped it out once before. So I gotta do that, patch up the rear bumper a little bit. I'm still gonna keep the half cut just because I do have the right side exit exhaust. And then again, new fenders, 
swap out front bumpers. I will be prepping this bumper and painting it because I do like having both front ends to choose from. So I will, um, I will be prepping this 9091 front bumper. Then one final thing I want to touch on is my hood. I do need to uh, to re-clear it. So you can probably see like the light spots there and here and stuff. So overall the hood's in really good shape, but it does have to be wet sanded and re-cleared. So obviously that's really easy. I'll save the hood is probably one of the last pieces of the car that I actually touch. Uh, the rear spoiler still in very good condition. So I'm actually going to go ahead here in a moment and unbolt it um, and just hang it up in my shed, you know. But yeah, I take very good care of this. Most of the time the car is parked in shade, whether here or if I take it out somewhere. I usually even carry a towel or two to drape over this spoiler because that is my most prized piece of this car and uh, I love it so I want to make it last. But yeah, anyways, that's pretty much all my gripes that I want to complain about, about the, the bodywork of the car and that I want to aim on fixing. And you know, take extra care of the wheel wells and stuff and make sure that uh, any surface rust that I may have developed over the last couple of years is cleaned up and uh, yeah, just taken care of really. So I'm working on taking my spoiler off right now. I got the bolts off of this side. I just want to show you guys really quick what I'm using to mount this. Because normally, the way this spoiler was intended to be mounted originally is it's basically like a clamp style clip, which nobody produces anymore. And I only know one guy that has them. And it's too expensive to get just a single set made. So this is my uh, thing that I, my buddy James had made up, if any of you old subscribers remember him. Um, basically, just has some flat stock that we just drilled some holes into the shape of the spoiler. Um, so my spoiler is bolted down for anybody concerned about the uh, strength of it and the functionality of it. Both strong, both functional. So, yeah, there you go.